Hey everybody, this is Wiredog Sec back with another video for you guys. Welcome back to my channel. Hopefully you're all having an awesome day today. Today's video, we're going to take a look at this Printer Hacking 101 room inside of Try Hack Me. Just learn about and get hands on with printer hacking and understand the basics of IPP. Now before we get into it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're new here. Hit the like button if you're joined the video and then comment below your thoughts and opinions on the information shared. All right, let's go ahead and jump into it here. All right, y'all, let's get started. Task number one, unit one, introduction. In this room, we will look at the most common printer hacking techniques and we'll look at why they're made vulnerable. Mass printer hacking has been taking advantage of over the past few years. One example would be when one attacker hacked around 50,000 printers, printing out messages asking people to subscribe to PewDiePie. And the new task will take a look at the reasons behind the success of this attack. If you don't know who PewDiePie is, he's a big uh, YouTuber, I believe. But anyway, I, I remember seeing something about this a while back about all these printers getting hacked over the internet. I mean, why would you have an, a uh, printer exposed to the internet, right? But let's get into it here. And that's a, um, a sample of it right here. If you want to go ahead and pause the video and read that screenshot or a picture of it. Read the above, already did that, so let's continue on to task number two. Unit 2, IPP port. The reason behind the printer's vulnerability, which affected over 50,000 printers, was simply an open IPP port. What do you know? Exposed to the internet. The internet printing protocol is a specialized internet protocol for communication between client devices and printers. It allows clients to submit one or more print jobs to the printer or print server and perform tasks such as queuing or querying the status of a print printer obtaining the status of print jobs or canceling individual print jobs when an IPP port is open to the internet it is possible for anyone to print to the printer or even transfer malicious data through it using it as a middleman for attacks a recent study by var IOT vulnerable and attack repository for IOT showed that there are still around 80,000 vulnerable printers open to the world most of them appear to be run the uh, cup server which is a simple unix printing system so be sure to click this link here and check that out if you're unfamiliar with that particular website it seems like it's the iot version of shodan or similar i'm sure you can find a lot of stuff on shodan as well a lot of people like to put their iot devices um, on the internet for some reason a lot of times they're unaware of these security vulnerabilities and you know they just plug something in connect to their network and it's connected to the internet next thing you know someone's hacking into like their webcam or their nest door camera or something like that or uh, ring doorbell excuse me okay um iot is internet of things if you're unaware i like to call it internet of trash due to the um insecurity of it well let's continue on an open ipp port can expose a lot of sensitive information such as printer name location model firmware version or even printer wi-fi ssid it says what does ipp run on right so google is our best friend when it comes to a lot of things and especially in this particular case if you're unfamiliar with this port that ipp runs on it's going to be 631 so you do some googling and you'll discover that it's on 631 so let's move on to task number three task number three unit three targeting and exploitation sounds like we're going to get into some of the bread and butter here locating and exploiting local network printers github it's got the website here rub dash nds pret we'll be using this awesome toolkit throughout the next bit the printer exploitation toolkit is a handy tool that is used for both local targeting and exploitation. You can install it by running the following commands. So go ahead and run that if it's not on your particular machine. I'm going to try and see if it's on this attack box by default. If not, I'll go ahead and run those commands. Uh, let's see dash locating printers. Simply running Python, print.py will start an automatic print or printer discovery in your local network. It's also possible by running an nmap scan on your whole network, but unfortunately it might take a longer time. This is because the print.py scan is focused on the ports which printer communication on by default, thus making it immensely faster. And it's got a little screenshot there, which makes sense. I mean, if you can do that with nmap, like it said, just limit it, limit it down to whatever printer port your particular printer is running on on your network. And I've done something similar in the past at prior organizations looking for printers. A lot of times these printers, are i mean they're running web servers on them so you can go to the website or the, the web interface of it and a lot of times these you know it folks put these printers in and they don't reset 
the password to change the default settings for the password. So you can just log in with like admin, admin, or something like that. And then once you get in, you can do pretty much whatever you want because you're the administrator, right? And a lot of times these printers will have um, internal hard drives in them. So when people go in like print to them or maybe scan to them, sometimes they're multifunctional printers, you know, scan documents, whatever. Um, so the documents will be saved onto the hard drive on that printer. So you can go in there and you can see some um, documents with sensitive information, like, you know, maybe um, stock information or maybe stuff turn, uh, containing, you know, personal uh, identifiable information, HIPAA information, stuff like that. Continuing on, exploiting. Now it's time to finally exploit the printer. There are exactly three options you need to try. When exploiting a printer using PRET, 1PS, PostScript, PJL, printer job language, PCL, printer command language. You need to try out all these languages just to see which one is going to be understood by the printer. Sample usage, it's got a little output there, so read that. Last option works if you have a printer connected to your computer already. After running this command, you are supposed to get a shell out alike output with different commands. Run help to see them, okay, which is usual. Run help commands, and it's got everything listed out there. Looks like some, yeah, like Unix like commands, Linux like commands, and such. Very simple commands. Build in different languages which printers can use to communicate. As you can see, PET allows us to interact with printers as if we were working with a remote directory. We can now store, delete, and add information to the printer. More commands are on this GitHub. You can possibly try PRET on your computer at home or your printer at home just to test the security. Nice cheat sheet. Go ahead and click that if you want to check out the cheat sheet. Practice. Bad example of IPP configuration. I have attached a poorly configured CUP server VM in this task. Deploy it and access the IPP port at the IP. It'll probably be different for you guys. See if you can retrieve any sensitive information. PRET isn't going to work here. It is running on port 9000 by default. Note also, an SSH access to the machine allows you to set up SSH tunneling, open all CUPS features, and providing you an ability to use attached printers. SSH password can be easily brute force. We pass an example a command for SSH tunneling. It's got listed out there. After doing so, you can easily add the CUPS server in your VM's printer settings and even try to send some printing jobs. Try out different techniques and have fun. All right, you're going to answer these questions here. How would a simple printer TCP DOS attack look as a one-line command? Review the cheat sheet provided in the task above. Uh, what attack are, are printers often vulnerable to, which involves sending more and more information until a pre-allocated buffer size is surpassed? Connect to the printer, printer instructions, but what's the Fox underscore printer located? What is the size of the test sheet? So let's go ahead and go through some of these and see what we can find. How would a simple printer TCP DOS attack look as a one-liner command? And you'll find this answer in that cheat sheet link listed above, all true, semicolon, do NC printer 9100, semicolon, done. This next one is gonna be buffer overflow. I mean, this one pretty much sounds self-explanatory. Review the cheat sheet uh, provided in the task above. What attack? Our prints often vulnerable to which involves sending more and more information to a pre-allocated buffer size is surpassed. And it's, this is not just only in printers, this is in I mean applications and other stuff as well. So uh, like I said, it's pretty much self-explanatory if you know what buffer overflows are or heard about it before. It says connect to the printer, print the instructions above. Where's this Fox printer located? And I did run a rust scan on it, you know, because this is something you do in the real world. If you have a printer, you're gonna run some kind of scanner or tool on it. And it found these open ports, 22 and 631. So let's go ahead and visit uh, port 631. Pretty sure this is going to be the uh, web interface to get to the printer. So let's go ahead and pull this up in this Firefox browser. All right. And what do you know? The web interface. So let's go ahead and do some digging around. Let's find wherever this Fox underscore printer is. So it's going to go to... It's probably going to be under printers. Yep. And it says Skitty's Basement. So let's go ahead and copy that. In there. And let's see. Awesome. Now it wants us to print a test sheet. So let's try that. So go here and then maybe. Nope, it's not going to be in here. Uh, let's see. Oh, print test page. Let's see what this does. Sent to printer one. Awesome. Okay. It says, what's the size of the test sheet? Looks like 1K. Could be answer to that. Awesome. So it solves that one.
Okay, let's take a quick look at the scan results. As you can see here, 22 is open running SSH, and 631 is open, of course, with the cups running. And if you go in, you can try to brute force that SSH login. I'm using Hydra to try to do it, but as you can see, it's taking a long time to finish. So I decided to randomly guess the password using the you know, SSH printer at whatever, and use password123, and I was able to log into this particular machine. And just going through, looking at some of the information, type in help, to find some more some more information here you can read all the stuff here listed help command listed all the commands you can use do all kinds of stuff so feel free to play around with that use ls to list all directories in here so play around with it see we could see if you can find anything of interest try this with your own environment with your own printers and see if you can find anything out of the ordinary all right let's move on to the next uh, section it says unit four conclusion turns out the printer hacking isn't that hard at all the problem here arises from low awareness of these issues and multiple misconfigurations made by administrators and users like i said a lot of times you put these printers in place and then they don't change the default passwords so you can do some googling and find the username and password for the default login for these printers and you can get into the web interface here and do all kinds of stuff a small research project of mine suggested that it is possible to get almost full server file access by simply exploiting the printer service running on it. A shock from this discovery motivated me to create this room and bring more attention to this. Now make sure you secure your printer by making it invisible for from or for the outer internet and reconfiguring administrator access. Check that your printer is invulnerable when I use the nmap to scan it. To see, like I said, you can try nmap, you can try actual vulnerability scan like Nessus, um, Rapid7, Nexpos, Inside VM, Qualys, anything like that. Go learn more about printers through further research and experimentation. Congrats on completing this room. Awesome, room is done. Now, like I said, a lot of times these printers have hard drives and stuff in there. So when people send print jobs to the printers, you can go in there to the printer and see what they're printing. Sometimes it'll contain sensitive information on whatever document they're trying to print or it'll have files and such stored onto that printer's um, storage device. Maybe it's in some kind of um, you know, memory or an actual hard drive inside the printer itself. And you can go and check and see if you got any type of sensitive files there. And of course, if you run into insecure printers in your environment, be sure to notify the appropriate, appropriate personnel to get those fixed. Um, I had ran into this issue at a prior organization where I had a bunch of printers out there that they had the default set and I was able to log into a bunch of them. I mean, there's maybe hundreds of, of printers, but I only did like a subset. I logged into maybe, you know, 5%. So, hey, I was able to log into 5% out of, you know, 100 printers or whatever. And here's the evidence and you guys need to fix this, remediate this issue because if I can do it, then anybody in the company could probably do it if they can get to this printer login page. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you got any type of valuable information from it, be sure to hit that like button. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Helps helps out my channel and then helps get the good word out there and then comment below your thoughts and opinions on this video. And as always, thank you for watching and have a nice day. See you later.